Hi there, Heather Liu here of Closet Core Patterns, coming to teach you a really fun, cool trick when you are making shirts, and it's called the burrito method. And no, you're not gonna be eating your shirts, but you are going to be kind of wrapping them up. Um, after you assemble your yolks, gonna be wrapping the front and the back into this burrito shape. We're gonna pull everything to the uh, right side, and you're gonna end up having this really beautiful, clean, enclosed finish. It gives a really beautiful, um, kind of professional looking look to whatever you're making, whether that's shirts or shirt dresses. Um, and most, I think, pattern instructions kind of describe a burrito method, but it can be hard, hard to visualize. So the purpose of this is just to kind of walk you through all of the steps and help you visualize how it works so you understand, you know, what is kind of happening here. Um, and obviously this works for lots of patterns, but in particular I would say it works great for the Cali shirt, which I'll show you an example of uh, in a moment. That's one of our patterns at Closet Core Patterns or uh, the Pure Winkle shirt and shirt dress, which is a crew pattern, which is our sewing um, and pattern subscription service. I'm wearing the Pure Winkle right now. And it's the same technique, whether you're making this, maybe you're making the Archer shirt from Grain Line. There's lots of shirt patterns out here. This technique is going to work for all of them. So next up, I'm just gonna show you what we're kind of looking for, what it's gonna look like when it's finished, and then we can just get into a quick demonstration to show you how it works. Okay, so here we are. You can see here, this is a Cali shirt. Uh, this was one of our original samples. We made this many years ago. And and what you can see if I turn it around to the back is you can see this yoke. We have a little bit of a line of top stitching here. We've got our pleat here. We've got our collar attached. Obviously, this is clean finish. There's also a line of top stitching along the shoulder seam. But then when you turn it to the wrong side, it's the same thing. You have a really beautiful clean finish. So you don't have any you know, raw seam edges here. Everything is completely enclosed. And this is what the burrito method accomplishes. So I'm gonna show you an example. We're gonna kind of do step-by-step, -step, show you how to do this using a periwinkle shirt. But like I said, regardless of what pattern you're working with, it's more or less the same technique. So right now, uh, periwinkle has a bit of a gathered back. So it's already been pre-gathered here. And you'll see I have two yoke pieces here. And we've just, for the sake of ease and understanding, the right side or the kind of visible uh, sides of the garment are in this blueprint. And then the um, layer of the yoke, the kind of yoke facing, I guess, that's gonna be on the inside of the garment, we've done in black. So it's just easier for you to kind of tell which one is which one. And so of course, before we do anything, we're just gonna line up our yoke to the back of our shirt. And we've already checked those gathers should line up, so we're all good. So I'm just gonna quickly do this. Uh, matching any notches, if you have any notches. And then we are going to go to the machine and put all of this together. And I am gonna walk you through sewing the actual thing together as well, because there's a few little steps that I'm gonna show you that are gonna make this a little bit easier. And obviously with your yoke, the most important thing is, even if the pattern doesn't call for a center back notch, we always suggest you kind of like fold your, your piece in half and mark the center back, because it's just easier to match up center back to center back. So now that this is attached, we're gonna go to the machine and sew it together. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I've just started uh, sewing this and I'm using black thread just so that you can see what I'm doing. And even though the seam allowance for this is 5 eighths, I'm gonna sew it just short of 5 eighths because we're gonna end up sewing the yoke, the other yoke to the other side of this. And I, don't, I just wanna make sure that I don't end up seeing this first line of stitching. So I'm just sewing at a scant 5 eighths. <laughs> Always removing my pins as I approach them. And if you're sewing a shirt like the Periwinkle that does have gathering, you might wanna sew it with the gathering facing you. That way you can kind of have a little bit more control, make sure that the gathers are being distributed evenly. Um, you know, I, I'm sewing with yoke side up, so just a little note for you. Because I can't really see my gathers right now. And also for this first line of stitching, you could do this as a basting stitch using a really long stitch length. So if for some reason the gathers need to be readjusted, you know what, I'm just gonna adjust my stitch length right now. Um, and then that way, if I need to rip anything out, it's just a little bit easier because I don't have a long stitch to deal with. Back at my pressing station here, and I've got that uh, first yoke attached, right? So we did right side to right side because the final shirt is gonna end up looking like this. And now, in order to get that second yoke on, we're gonna turn it around so that the, the, the back of the shirt is facing us. We're gonna take the other yoke, and now we're going to do right side of the yoke 
to the wrong side of the shirt. So that when this is all assembled on the inside of the shirt, you're gonna see the right side of the fabric. So we're gonna just do the same thing. And I'm gonna go and pin, pin this in place. Right, just a reminder, right side of the yoke touching the wrong side of the shirt. And this next pass of stitching we're gonna do is gonna be the final stitch. So um, I'm gonna sew it with the yoke, the inside kind of yoke facing, facing up. And I can use a regular stitch length. And now it's all pinned, I'm gonna go back to my machine. And now I can just sew a regular 5 8 seam. Of course, I'm gonna shorten my stitch length so I'm not doing that basing stitch anymore. And I'm just gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. And now I'm just gonna sew the whole line, oops, sorry, it was in reverse there, at 5 eighths. So here I am back at my pressing station and I just wanna show you again what this looks like. So we've got um, the, outer the outer yoke and the back of the garment, right side facing us. If we turn this to the wrong side, uh, the yoke is in place. We've already kind of enclosed the seam. So that seam that we just sewed is going to be completely enclosed here. So we don't even have to worry about finishing these edges because they're all gonna be neat and tidy and tucked away. And the right side of the bottom yoke is gonna be the side touching your skin, okay? So before we move on and before we go and make our burrito, we just have to get this yoke um, pressed and um, stitched into place. So I'm gonna just try to, from the right side, starting from the right side, just try to get my yokes aligned. And I'm gonna take a hot iron and I'm gonna press the seam and if you have gathers, try to avoid hitting your gathers with your iron. If you want, you can hit it with a bit of steam. Yeah, you wanna kind of avoid pressing those gathers down. You wanna keep them nice and loose. So I'm really just focusing my steam on the yoke seam. I know it can be a little hard to see with this print. And by the way, if you do like this pattern, this fabric, we have lots in stock at Core Fabrics. We'll make sure we link to it in the notes for the video. And I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom yoke. And I just wanna make sure, because I was pressing from the other side, I just wanna make sure that this seam now is lying nice and flat. So I'm just gonna press that open. Again, when I get to the yoke, the gathers here, I just wanna make sure I'm not hitting them with too much steam or tension. And then I wanna just press this seam up. Now, you can, if you want, understitch the yoke to the seam allowance, right? You could go to your machine and you could understitch this, not including this top yoke in your stitch line. But traditionally with shirts, what you actually do is you stitch, you kind of top stitch from like on the, the yoke side about an eighth of an inch away all the way along. And that really anchors that seam line in place. So this whole thing becomes like a really kind of secure bit. But before we do that, I wanna grade the seam, okay? So right now I have one, two, three seams. And especially if you're sewing with a fine fabric like a viscose or a silk or something like that, when you have three seams like that, you're gonna end up, especially if it's like a sheer fabric, you're gonna see the edge of where that seam is and like you can almost see the impression of those three seams. So what we wanna do is reduce bulk and how you do that with, grade, with grading is you're basically trimming each successive seam with the longest seam touching the side of the fabric that's gonna be facing the world. So we want the longest seam of, the longest seam we're gonna leave is gonna be the one touching the yoke. And then the shortest seam is gonna be the one basically closest to our body. So I'm gonna leave this top seam alone. I'm gonna leave that one long, but I am gonna start grading the yoke seam. And I'm gonna grade this pretty aggressively, like I'll grade it to about a quarter of an inch. Remember, even if you're sewing with a really um, fraying fabric, this whole seam's gonna get top stitched into place. So you don't need to worry about this seam coming undone or fraying. And if you've never seen a pair of scissors like this before, they're called duckbill scissors. They're also called applique scissors and they are fabulous for grading seams because as you'll see, this kind of wide part here is protecting, it's kind of laying against the other seams that I'm not trimming yet, and as I'm cutting along, it's preventing me from accidentally snipping a seam that I don't wanna cut. So they're really helpful. Otherwise, you have to use your fingers a lot more. 
If you want, you could also kind of do this step with a rotary cutter. Sometimes I do that if I'm feeling really lazy. And so then the second seam, so I think, believe the second seam is gonna be the back of the shirt. We're just trimming this one a little bit. And so you almost wanna think of grading like, it's like a staircase. So the shortest seam is the first step, the you know middle seam is the second step, and then the longest seam is the top step. So we're just, I'll show you once I'm kind of done grading this, how it's gonna look. But again, what you're just trying to do is not have all of the seams end at exactly the same spot so that you don't see that little bit of bulk when the garment is sewn. Sorry, I'm just having trouble getting in here. There we go. And you don't have to be like flawless with this. It's just, you wanna reduce a little bit of bulk. So let me just show you what that seam looks like when it's graded. So you can see here, we have the shortest seam, the middle seam, and then the top seam. So when this entire thing gets pressed and turned around, you just don't have this big line and this big thick seam because it's all been graded. So grading is a really important skill. You should probably be doing it in most sewing projects, but especially with shirts, when you're working with fine shirtings, it's really important. So I should also, because this has got gathering, I'm gonna go and remove the, the basting stitches here that I had for that gathering. So you wanna do that at some point. And once I've removed those basting stitches, now I'm gonna go and do my line of top stitching to anchor all three of these layers together. Here we are at the machine. I'm gonna just use my regular foot, but if you do have an edge stitch foot, let me see if I have one in here I could show you. Edge stitch feet have like a little metal guide. Oh, here we go. So they have a little metal guide. I think you can see it here. And what you do with that edge stitch foot while you're sewing is you line up the guide of the edge stitch foot with the seam line that you're trying to follow. And then you would move your needle position over as much as you need to. Um, so these are really great and they help you get really even smooth lines of top stitching and it kind of takes a little bit of the guesswork out because you're just basically guiding your seam line along that guide here. But I'm gonna just show you how to do this on a regular foot because if you don't have an edge stitch foot, um, you know, I'm gonna show you how I like to get nice even lines of top stitching. So we sew on FAF machines here at Closet Core. Everybody's machines are different. Everybody's feet are a little bit different, but on our kind of regular foot, I'm ho hopefully you can see, we have two little red dots here. And so I use these little, like there's the center line here and then about an eighth of an inch of, away, there's a little red mark and that indicates a, an eighth of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this seam line with that red line and that's gonna give me more or less perfect one eighth top stitching and as I'm sewing I just want to make sure we pressed everything neatly but I just want to make sure that everything's lying nice and flat as I go and I'm just going to try to line up again line up my that red line with this the seam line to try to get smoothest stitches as I can okay so I'm at the end of my stitch line I'm just going to cut my stitching here See how it looks? So I, I did a pretty good job. I've got a pretty even line of top stitching. It's about an eighth of an inch away. Take a look on the wrong side. Here, um, it's not as even, but guess what? It doesn't matter because nobody's gonna see this. It's really important that you get the right side looking perfect. So just make sure when you're doing that top stitching that you're actually doing it on the right side of the fa fabric like and the right side of the garment and not the, the yoke, the bottom yoke side because it's not gonna end up looking really beautiful. So now we're very close, now that we've got this done, we can actually attach the front and then we're really close to being able to do our burrito method. Okay, so we're back at our pressing station and now it's time to attach the front. And so um, during, in shirt making, you know, you shouldn't have the sleeve or anything attached right now. We're really just, this is kind of the first steps of the shirt process, we're assembling the body. And we wanna attach the front so you're gonna have two pieces for the front, the left and the right, and you are going to line up your shoulder seams with, so you're gonna line up the shoulder seams of your front with the shoulder seams of the bottom yoke, okay? And it seems counterintuitive, but you're going to have the wrong side of the shirt front touching the right side of the bottom yoke, okay? So remember, the back is blue and the visible yoke, the top yoke is blue. So I'm pinning it to the bottom yoke or the one that's gonna be visible only when we're wearing the shirt, like in the inside of the shirt. 
And so I'm going to go and if we have any notches, we want to match that up. And I'm not including that, that top yoke in the seam. It's just the bottom. And now we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to sew these shoulders together. And then we're going to be very close to being able to do the burrito. And we're, once this seam is sewn, we're going to roll everything up and we're going to put it all together in the burrito and then you're going to see the magic of this technique. And just like we did with the shirt yoke when we, we sewed it for the first time, because we're going to end up sewing the other yoke to the seam as well, again, I'm just going to sew this seam at a scant 5 eighths, so just under 5 eighths. And again, if you wanted to, you could baste, you could use a basting stitch here just in case that stitch line is visible. It's easier to remove, but I'm going to live dangerously and just do it with a regular shorter stitch. And I'm going to go and do the exact same thing for the other side. Okay, so here we are back at our pressing station. I have gone and sewn those shoulder seams, so the front to the uh, bottom yoke at just under 5 eighths. And now comes the magic, okay? Because you can see if I open this shirt up, now we're seeing, if I just hold onto that shoulder seam, you can see that the top yoke is not yet attached. And this is where we address that. So what you want to do is turn the entire garment so that the front is facing up. And we're going to take the back shirt, the bottom part of the shirt, and the two fronts, and we are going to roll them together as tightly as we can. And what we're not going to include in this roll is the top yoke, OK? We're going to leave that free. And the reason that we want to get this as tight as we can is because now we're going to wrap the top yoke around this little burrito that we made, we're going to pin everything in place. And you just want to make sure that you wrap it nice and tight so that you can fit it into this delicious fabric burrito that we're making. So these shoulder seams are almost pinned. We're going to go back to the machine. And now we're going to sew this seam using a normal stitch length at a regular 5 8 seam and it's going to fully hide that first line of stitching and now it's going to catch all three of these layers in that stitch line. And like I said, now I'm going to just sew this at a normal 5 8 And I'm just going to try to keep these seams nice and even as I go. And I'm going to repeat this for the other side. So essentially you're going to have all of those layers caught now in that final line of stitching. Back at our pressing station, forgive this gross watermark. We have just talking about how we're going to recover this. You don't have to look at that anymore. <laughs> um, but here we are. This is, look at, we got our little yolk burrito. And here's where the magic is about to happen. Before we get to the magic of pulling this whole thing out and, and seeing how it works, we have to grade these seams. Because once again, you've got three seams that we just sewed together. And we want to make sure that we don't have a big, ugly kind of thick area here. So we're going to, just like we did when we attached the yoke, we're going to grade. And it can, I always kind of have to <laughs> remind myself what seam to grade first. But the shortest one should be the bottom yoke. So I'm going to grade that pretty aggressively. And then the shirt front is going to get the next grade. And we're going to leave the top back yoke as is. Okay, so both seams have now been graded. Just to give you a little indication again, once the bottom yoke was the shortest one, the shirt front was the middle one, and then the top yoke of the back shirt we left the longest. So now comes the fun, the magic of the burrito method. So all you're going to do is just pull everything right side out. Ta-da! <laughs> we have a shirt. <laughs> we have the beginnings of a shirt. And as you will see, I'm just going to warm up this iron again. We now have a fully enclosed yoke. So this is the inside of the shirt, fully enclosed, no raw edges. Looks beautiful. Here's what it looks like from the right side. And now we're going to press the seam. Again, starting from the right side, I like to kind of pull a little, gently pulling on it so that the seam, 
sorry, the front is laying flat and it's pulling the seam flat as I'm pressing. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then to finish this, we're gonna top stitch those seams in place just like we did with the yoke. So not only is everything cleanly enclosed, but it's also stitched and locked into place. And so you do not have to worry about your seams fraying down the road, even if you wash and wear the shirt a million times. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go top stitch and then we're almost done. We're gonna do that line of top stitching just like I did with the yoke. I'm going to line up my foot, that little one eighth mark with the seam line. If you have an older machine, maybe you have a foot that doesn't have these markings, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. You could also uh, line up the seam line with the center of your foot and then just shift your needle position over. So that's also an option if you don't have an edge stitch foot. Okay, here we are. Final step, it's all done. So we just went and top stitched that yoke on the, in place um, along the shoulder seam and we top stitch on the yoke side just like we did for that back yoke seam. So our shoulders are now fully attached and now we're ready to, for the next step. So that might be attaching the sleeves. For me, I like to go and put in the collar now while this is all lying flat, it's much easier to sew. And you've got this beautiful, totally clean finish burrito method yoke that just makes your shirt look like it was made by a professional.